let's assume the case in which we start with the balance sheet assuming that you know how the balance sheet works you should know that the balance sheet has actually two main sections an asset section and a liability and equity section now in this particular case we start with ten thousand dollars at the bank but this ten thousand dollars was put into the business by the shareholders that's why we add ten thousand dollars here and keep in mind that the balance sheet has always to balance in other words the total assets section has always to be equal to the total liabilities and equity i'm going to show you through several examples how those two statements are interconnected let's consider our first example few customers come into the store and buy $100 worth of ice cream and they pay with cash therefore our cash account is going to increase by $100 therefore it's going to be $10,000 and $100 now we want to report this $100 of increased cash on our income statement as a revenue and that's why we go on and we record our revenue by $100 Keep in mind that under the income statement, we have two main items, two main accounts, the revenue and the expense. And once you subtract the expenses from the revenue, that is how you get your net profit, your bottom line. Let's consider now a second example. Let's say that we actually used $1,000 of our cash to buy $1,000 worth of inventories. Now the inventories are all those things that allow us to produce the final good. In other words, for example, if we bought all the materials that we need to make our ice cream, this is going to be inventories for us. And as you can see, we used $1,000 of our cash to buy the inventories. What are we going to do with our inventories? We are going to make new ice creams. Let's say that we use $500 worth of our inventories to make other ice creams that we are going to sell during the day. Therefore, if we do so, we want to decrease the value of the inventories by $500, and that's what we do here. On the other hand, we want to report the $500 that we used of our inventories as an expense. And this kind of expense is what we call in finance COGS or cost of goods sold. And in other words, this is going to be the expense that will allow us to produce the final item that then we can sell so all the expenses that we incur to make the sale they will be called cost of goods sold let's consider now another case a case in which we actually have some prepaid rent because we used two thousand dollars of our money to pay our rent and we take it off from our cash account that decreases by two thousand dollars now the month comes to you and you finally the owner of the place takes the money from our prepaid expense account therefore we want to decrease this account by one thousand dollars since the rent is one thousand dollars and we want to report this expense on our income statement that is how the prepaid expense account is connected to our income statement let's consider another case now Let's consider a case in which the customers come in and they buy $100 worth of ice cream but they don't pay yet, they're going to pay in one month time. In this case we're going to use our accounts receivable to report and to keep track of our money to be received from the customers and then $100 of revenue because we want to already accrue this revenue. Let's consider now another example, let's see how our non-current assets affect our income statement. Remember that the non-current assets are those ones that have a life cycle of more than one year. One example of current assets is of course the equipment that we use into the business. Let's say that we used $5,000 of our cash, therefore our cash is going to decrease to $2,100 to buy our ice cream machine that is worth $5,000. Now. Assuming that this ice cream machine in 2015 when we bought it is worth $5,000 we want to depreciate it in the next year in 2016 to reflect more or less the actual value of that machine in that year. Therefore we go on and we say that in 2016 the machine is going to be worth $2,500. Therefore we go on and we reduce the value of the machine by $2,500. But we want to report, we want to expense this amount on our income statement. 
In other words, we do this accounting operation here because we want to show on our income statement that our machine lost value. Although there was no really actual expense here, in other words, there was no really cash disbursement. That's why when you build your cash flow statement, you want to take off all the items where there was a non-cash transaction. Let's consider, let's see now how the current liabilities affect our income statement. Let's see one case, the case in which we buy $500 worth of raw materials from our suppliers and we use it right away to produce our ice creams. And therefore, these $500 will be reported right away in our COGS. And that's why we have $1,000 worth of COGS so far. Now, as you can see, we have a net profit Actually, this is a net loss of $4,300 and our balance sheet is not balancing so far. Why is that? Well, because we are missing a last step here that we have to take to balance our balance sheet. Now, to show you how our balance sheet is interconnected with our income statement, I have to remind you that if we don't connect the income statement to our balance sheet, there is no way that we are able to balance our books. In other words, what you see here, net profit, net loss, we have to report this amount from our income statement to balance our books. That's why when we go on and we actually report the net profit, actually in this case is the net loss on our balance sheet, as you can see magically, our balance sheet is balancing. In both sides, we have $6,200. And that is how our two statements are interconnected.